Welcome back. We're going to start in on the oral cavity. So the oral cavity or the mouth is the entrance for the GI tract and it is composed of stratified squamous epithelium that is non-keratinized. Um, there are portions of the oral cavity that are considered that or that are keratinized. Portions of our tongue are keratinized and um, our lips are keratinized. The uvula is the tiny structure that hangs off the back of the soft palate and its function is to elevate and close off the nasal pharynx so that food doesn't go upwards and out our nose. I'm sure that has happened to everybody at some point in their life, food or drink depending. Uh oh, okay. Um, the tongue is a large muscular organ that is found um, housed in our in our oral cavity, and it has multiple functions. Um, one of its major functions is for manipulation of food, so that we can move it around when we are eating. Um, but it also functions in helping us to swallow. It functions in allowing us to speak. So if we have no tongue, and oh, I forgot, it also functions in our sense of taste. So food would not be very delicious if we couldn't taste it. It's attached at the floor or the base of the oral cavity by this lingual frenulum. If you ever heard of the term being tongue-tied, what what occurs when someone is tongue-tied is that that lingual frenulum is very small and the tongue can't move properly. Um, this can cause problems in infants if they have a very severe tongue tie, they won't be able to nurse effectively. You can also um, up here you see the superior labial frenulum which attaches your lips and then down here there's an inferior labial fren frenulum. Um, if your lips are tied, lip tied, that means that this labial frenulum isn't able to move very effectively and that can also cause problems with both speech and with um, nursing for infants. Um, here is the tongue. So you can see that the tongue has multiple papilla. Papilla are tiny little um, structures on the surface of the tongue and many of those papilla contain taste buds in them. Not all of them, but many of them do. There are different types of papilla and within each type there are different types of taste buds. Or for some of them there are different types of taste buds. Um, and then on the back of the tongue, posterior aspect, we have the lingual tonsil. Here we have our palatine tonsils. Um, palatine tonsils are the ones that we typically call the tonsils that are removed during um, a tonsillectomy. And um, so there, the, we never remove the lingual tonsil. That's one that doesn't leave. Um, we also have salivary glands that are found. I didn't mention, so hold on, sorry. Um, the tonsils function in um, protecting us as we are taking in food and drink, um, protecting us from any potential pathogens that are getting in with the food and drink. So it is found in saliva. Um, there's a lot of mucus and a lot of water, and these are going to help in producing that food bolus in our mouth that will um, slide down our throat much easier. Um, but there's also certain enzymes that help us in chemically breaking down food, as well as um, some enzymes and antibodies that will protect us um, and help in cleaning our teeth and keeping pathogens from surviving. So how much saliva do we produce every day? 
we produce um, close to um, a liter to a liter and a half daily. Um, this is a this occurs mainly during meal times when we're eating or when we're thinking about food. Um, and like I said, most of it is water, but we do have enzymes that are going to help in breaking materials down and in protection. Um, this helps to it helps us to be able to ingest the food and break down the food, and it cleans our oral cavity. So. Um, Saliva is actually very important. Um, producing saliva continuously would be uncomfortable. Think about sleeping at night if con you're continuously producing lots of saliva, which is why the majority of saliva is produced during the day when you're eating or during meal times when you're eating. And so our teeth or our gums function in mechanical digestion known as mastication. Um, and so what mastication does is it reduces the size of the pieces of material that are moving down our throat. So in babies, they masticate using their gums, their tongue, the roof of their mouth. They're moving the material down. But again, babies don't have teeth. And so when they masticate, um, the food that goes in has to already be pretty soft. But as we get older, we get teeth, and these teeth help us to take um, bites off of larger items and break it down into smaller subunits. And so this is going to um, be stimulated by um, regions of our um, medulla and pons. And those will send signals to our masseter muscle, external and internal um, pterygoid muscles to help us in chewing our food. And so what are teeth? Teeth then uh, emerge around, start emerging around six months. And they are responsible, they're the structures responsible for allowing us to eat more solid items. And so this is what a tooth looks like. Um, an individual tooth has um, a region known as the crown, which you can see. Um, the neck is under the gums, and then you have the root, which is deep to the neck. So it's um, inferior, well, I won't say inferior, I'll say it's deep to the neck, that's all I'll say. Um, teeth collectively are known as your dentition, and they fit into a socket known as the alveolar socket or the alveolar process. Remember, um, a tooth and jaw joint is known as a gomphosis, and it is an immovable joint. It is a um, connective tissue joint, so it's composed of dense regular connective tissue, and so the actual ligament that makes it is called the periodontal ligament, composed of dense regular connective tissue, and it holds that tooth to the jaw in that joint. So the mass of the tooth, the majority of the tooth is called dentin. Um, it is similar to bone, but it's harder than bone. Um, on the surface where we can see surrounding the crown of the tooth is enamel. This is a um, tough outer layer of calcium phosphate crystals. Um, it is very hard, but it does not reproduce. So if you damage the enamel, you're not going to be able to produce new enamel. And then deep to the dentin is the pulp cavity, which is where you have blood vessels, nerves, other connective tissues running through. And so down here we see that root canal, which is where blood vessels are moving in. So nutrients come in, 
waste products go out, and nerves are coming in. Um, what this nerve does is it allows us to feel when there is potential damage to the teeth. That's important so that we can then get our teeth fixed. And if you've ever had to have a root canal, or if you ever do, now you know what they're actually doing. They're drilling in to this root, basically killing the nerve so, because the tooth is dead already. So they have to get rid of the nerve. So the um, surrounding our tooth and jaw joint is the gums, which is known as our gingivae. This is dense, irregular connective tissue. It is composed of um, non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, so it has a nice um, moist feeling. Um, and it covers the alveoli, uh, alveolar process, not alveoli, I'm sorry, alveolar process, um, and protects that joint. If the gums get inflamed, that's known as gingivitis, and um, if the gums start to recede from the teeth, that actually leads to periodontal disease. So in infants, there are 20 deciduous teeth. These are known as your milk teeth. They can um, start forming or start erupting anywhere between um, well, really anywhere after birth, but typically between six and 30 months is when we see them come in. Um, and then they're going to be replaced in childhood and they are replaced by your permanent teeth, which we have 32 permanent teeth. Some of these permanent teeth are going to be removed um, prior to even coming in. Um, these third third molars, which are known as your wisdom teeth, are often removed before they can um, get or come in to um, break the surface of the to, um, of the gums. And the reason for that is because we don't have enough room in our jaw for all of these teeth. So some individuals have their wisdom teeth. Um, I am an individual that has all four of my wisdom teeth. But there are a lot of individuals like my son and my daughter who have had their wisdom teeth removed um, because they were having pain from the impaction. So we're born with all of the teeth that we have, but the majority of the teeth that we have are not going to be are not going to break through um, until we're about six months old. And then we'll start having teeth break through the baby teeth. And then as those baby teeth fall out, those deciduous teeth fall out, adult teeth will move into place. All right, I'm gonna stop here because this has been a 13 minute video. And we're going to get into the pharynx, esophagus, and stomach in our next video. Bye.